G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. I know it has been a long time. In fact, I think it's been almost 40 days since I last uploaded a video and um, we're kicking it off with the Kfir. Um, what do I have to say about this plane? It, oh my god, I've got a lot to say. But first, I might as well explain why I've been gone. If you don't want to hear about it, if you don't care, uh, I'll leave a timestamp in the description below and you can just skip to that. So. Uh, recently I've had a lot going on. I've just had a lot of weekends that haven't been free and of course for those of you that don't know I still work a full-time job so this isn't my full-time thing. I don't even do this thing part-time. I literally do it in my spare time and spare time is one thing that I've been extremely poor on lately. I've literally had something going almost every weekend and uh, it's pretty much been a wash every single time I go to make something. Um, and by the time I went to make something recently, the patch had come around, and I'd started to gather patch footage. Not only that, but we have ourselves a, uh, I don't want to say a new PC, but certainly a new cooling solution for our computer here. It's uh, a custom loop, and I spent about a week and a half building the custom loop, so uh, that is all down to you guys. Like, you guys basically funded that through purchasing of the decal, and... Uh, air models and merch and, and all of that sort of stuff. So for that, I am just so, so grateful. I just can't believe that all of this is because of you guys. And I get to enjoy this thing and I get to use this pretty cool workstation. Uh, I've like looking at the stats now of uh, my editing software and it's actually using my editing software quite well. And the cooling solution is handling it very, very well. I've got a couple more little touches to do, but it's pretty much done and I'm very, very happy with the way it turned out. If you'd like to see some photos of how it's co uh, come out, just check out my Instagram, uh, spit underscore flyer, like everything else. Um, and of course, a couple of other things that uh, I want to get out of the way. Um, there is a charity tournament where drops are available on uh, live streams. So if you guys uh, want some drops or anything like that, you guys should definitely follow Esports Ready, which is my brainchild along with uh, a bunch of the other Astro guys. Uh, FFG pretty much manages it now. He's doing an absolutely fantastic job and uh, give those guys a follow. Seriously, it's just a bit of fun between uh, some War Thunder enthusiasts, if you will. So, now that that is out of the way, onto the Kvir. This thing, oh my god, I have... I've pretty much had every aneurysm under the sun trying to get footage for this plane. Not necessarily because the performance is bad, but the performance is also bad. Let me explain. There are several things that make up a fairly competitive jet, and uh, these are mainly based around the aircraft, or the airframe, or the platform, as you might like to call it. Now, uh, for those of you who have maybe heard this phrasing before, platform, uh, you might think of the Phantom as an excellent missile platform. The MiG-21 might be a good dogfighting platform, or the F-5 might be a good dogfighting platform. However, the Kfir sits in a strange spot. It's loosely based off the Mirage, so surely that's not a bad thing. It's got a Delta Wing, it's got a fairly decent top speed, it has the ability to carry, in this case, four missiles on pylons. Uh, and of course, it has canards. Now, I, I don't know if those canards are supposed to be moving. Judging by the way they sit on the wing, I, I don't think they are supposed to be moving. But regardless, the Kvir has canards, and honestly, I don't really know what that does functionally. Maybe you guys in the comments can let me know. Now, for those of you that may know me well, I don't particularly like the Mirage platform. Now, that's just out of pure preference. That doesn't necessarily make it a bad platform, but this platform is well known to, uh, in this case, with this engine, rip plenty of wings so you have to be really careful when you get up to those high speeds you can't just sit around 1400 kilometers per hour and like th this thing will comfortably do 1400 kilometers per hour so it's not a bad speed platform but it is certainly one of those things that um, does tend to struggle especially if you look at the background footage here i'm at those lower speeds and i'm having a lot of trouble regaining those speeds so this thing is not a dogfighter and this thing is also not a missile bus. So, so what is it? And, and this is the conundrum that the Kfir finds itself in. It's not a plane that can rely on good missiles. It gets AIM-9Gs and AIM-9Ds. Now, personally, I would prefer to use the AIM-9Ds simply because of the tighter bore uh, and the sort of lower chance of finding another magical target like uh, Defen happened to in the intro. Now, 
don't don't hate on Deffen. He's a he's a pretty cool guy. You should check his videos out. He is a much better pilot than me, and he probably explains things better than me as well. So he's definitely a content creator worth having a look at. And of course, we're good mates. We chat fairly regularly. So there's there's definitely no hard feelings there. It's just a little bit of fun, and I thought I might poke a little bit of fun at Deffen in the meantime. So the Kavir. Again, a uh, sort of meh dogfighting platform. In fact, not a good dogfighting platform because of its lack of acceleration. And this is something that you might see in uh, the opposite in things like the MiG-21. The MiG-21 accelerates fairly well. Things like the F-5 even accelerate decently well and retain energy well in turns. So if it doesn't have one of those two sort of features, then you're kind of shit out of luck because this plane is really one of those planes that you need to find one-on-ones. And of course, of course, one-on-ones don't really happen in this tier. It becomes uh, a fairly quick dog pile pretty damn quickly. So in this plane, you kind of end up either being everyone's bitch or you kind of end up being everyone's bitch. And the only time that ever changes is whether it's the enemy or your friendlies. Sometimes you end up baiting and you end up basically securing the victory by just doing stuff that makes the enemy go after you. And in other cases, the enemy absolutely bends you over backwards and no lube absolutely drive fucks you hard. And that is not a fun time. Unfortunately, I have very little good things to say about the Kafir in War Thunder's current meta. In a 1v1, this thing as you can tell by the intro, is an absolute stunner. Like, it's got pretty much everything beat except maybe the F5. Maybe the MLD if you're a competent pilot. But, my god, when this thing comes into a multi-engagement scenario, scenario, situation, etc., you're pretty much, like I said, shit out of luck. It's just the way that this plane functions, having such excellent performance and having no radar. As you can see between... Uh, this match and the last one, I the, the radar got removed, and I guess that's historical, but you're pretty much out of luck when it comes to being able to even slave things to your radar. You really don't have many options in this plane, except get the planes that are not paying attention, or find some 1v1s. And for me, that is where the Kefir is sorely let down. This is what makes the Kefir, in my opinion, quite a bad plane. Now, the performance, as in the, the platform, is okay for being fast. You can be fast, you can climb, but you can't really do much with that. So really, what's the point? It's kind of like having, I don't know, the X-15, but well, because you can carry no armament, well, you can't really do any damage. And that's how I feel playing the Kvir. You are pretty much just a racehorse, just a, just a pretty little racehorse with some pretty little camouflages and not really much to show for it. And for me, that really ruins the Kefir and in a way ruins the uh, Israeli tech tree because this is what a lot of people will want to grind towards. And just like me, I feel like they'll be sorely disappointed. Now, speaking of sorely disappointed, I am really fucking upset by the uh, number of phantoms that end up helicoptering for me. And then at the same time, just as you can see from the footage, uh, a single Kefir comes in and swipes both of the kills. So, I mean, I'm not particularly fussed because this guy saved me, but that does kind of demonstrate the you're everyone's bitch, but you're also everyone's bitch. So, I really, really find myself in uh, a little bit of conflict with this plane because it's just such a frustrating machine to fly. You can't really control the battle like you can in the F4J, the MLD, the F4EJ, anything like that. You kind of have to go with the flow of the battle and for me that's not the way to play you have to be controlling you have to be pushing the envelope otherwise the enemy is going to push back on you and you're the one that's going to feel the hurt and for me that really makes a bit of a bad taste in my mouth that's the kefir for me it's just that that bad taste in my mouth that so so almost there it is just almost perfect what i would say is this thing maybe needs better missiles. If you gave it magics, this thing would be 11.3 worthy, absolutely, and it would be a much more formidable platform. Uh, if you gave it something not like, maybe not M9Ls, but something close to an R60M. If you gave this thing R60Ms, it would be hella deadly, but obviously uh, I don't think this thing carried R60Ms. Either way, maybe some sort of very rudimentary 
all spec missile that maybe the Israelis developed something or other. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I don't know much about these types of jets, but I just wish this thing had better weapons. And better weapons is pretty much all this thing needs to be competitive. Because it feels like that phrase, you know, you can have your cake and eat it too. And in this case, you, you can have that cake, but you can't eat it. And you can just sort of sit there and cry about, you know, not wanting to get fat or whatever it is. It's really upsetting because this thing could be something great. I feel like it's a, it's a bit of a sick joke where it's like, haha, you've got this awesome plane that has awesome performance, but you can't do fuck all in it, so enjoy and continue crying. So uh, that that's kind of how I feel about this plane. And you know, when you get good matches, it's quite satisfying. And when you get teams that are happy to support you, that's excellent. But those things are few and far between. And the Kefir really struggles to make those situations for itself where it's not gonna get gang raped by more than one enemy. And for me, it does really leave that sour taste in my mouth. The Kefir could be something really special, but unfortunately, Gaijin just leaves it hanging. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. It's great to be back. I will have more content for you soon. I am trying so hard to get footage, but until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.